get in line. I don't think it was like, somebody grab the line and reel that in. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42 foot catamaran from the ground up. Laying out the area for our hatch. This is the hatch mold. This is like what we did before, same premise. There are the beautiful Vetus flush hatches. Ah, basically it. So this is the week or month of cutting holes in the boat. We of course have done the aft hatches here where those are gonna go. And now we're trying to do the deck ones. It's warm, it's the last couple of warm days I think we're gonna have for a while. So trying to do these exterior things really quick uh, before we lock up the boat and try to start heating it for the winter. So that's the idea there. Once I get that in place, I can put in the final bulkhead piece that we have. It's one that goes in the aft berth, but we needed these hatches to go in first because we're gonna end up using that area as kind of a drain um, for the flush hatches as well. Really what was holding us up was waiting for matched gel coat. Um, now that that is here, I was able to make these molds and start this thing, otherwise I would have done that this summer. Oh well. Well, you can see that, but that is all glassed out. This is the area where I ground down um, the flange that I misbonded and reapplied new glass in there. And apparently I hit the vein that is as thick as it possibly can get. Um, probably the thickest glass on this boat, actually, right in that little section. And it's pretty good right there, too, for that whole deck joint thickness. Uh, so we got a lot of rigidity in that and we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing on all these other areas where we'll be glassing from the inside, we'll be um, adding core back to it, then glassing again over the top of that so it's incredibly rigid through these, these areas. Um, could be unidirectional in there as well, um, but that is now a big old hole. area, move that top layer. Um, right here is solid glass, all the way around here, same thing this direction. So what I'll have to do is I think grind that out to get it so it's recessed and the same depth as what this is. And then that whole insert should be able to sit straight down in here and hopefully you can find a way to make it flush.
As you saw, there were two different kind of surfaces that we were bonding to. It was the exposed foam and then the edges, which were solid fiberglass. Where the methacrylate is, especially, is making it into a solid um, fiberglass section through there. And then uh, the other areas, it's now acting just like any other thing where the fiberglass skin is actually getting bonded to that foam core. Uh, then what we did is we laid these pieces of, of fiberglass that we have, our interior pieces, and kind of bent those so they do follow the curve of the deck and are hopefully holding those hatch pieces where they're completely flush then. We talked about before, we are gonna have like foam on this deck uh, as our non-skid thing. So all that really is needed to be perfect are the edges of those hatches. Everything else is gonna be covered with a foam or a non-skid typical thing. Uh, so it's just for like the first inch around the hatch that needs to be perfect. Everything else can get glassed in, fared in, and uh, should look great. Hey dolls, my name is Joyce and I want to introduce you to my galley. Hopefully you'll be getting some more specials from me in the future as I do some cooking with my friend Louisa. Welcome to Cooking on a Boat with Louisa. I'm Louisa and this is my boat. But before we can get into that, because Thanksgiving is coming up, I just want to let you know about a little secret called Kami Kodo Knives. Now these knives do come in a beautiful ashwood box and inside here we have three different knives which are all made of Japanese steel and each knife is personally inspected before being sent out to you. One thing I love about these knives is they come with a lifetime guarantee and I heard that they are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. So my friend Jessica, you might know her, such a doll, went on a fishing trip and came back with some striped bass, which we're gonna try and turn into fish tacos. So I'm gonna use these knives to cut them into little strips to fry up later. And let's just see how that cuts. So if I wanted to do thick strips like this, it's really great. I'm gonna see what it does for a really thin strip. Oh, there we go. If we were doing sushi, that would just be perfect. All right, so that chopping was super easy. I feel like this could cut my dinner time in half, make my life so much easier, and I could give a little more time to spend on myself, you know, as I get ready, get my nails done and things like that. But Kami Koto is having their pre-Black Friday sale, so anybody that goes there using the code kamikoto.com slash mjsailing, which we'll have in the description box, and then uses the code mjsailing, is going to get $50 off the order. Get yourself a set of knives for your Thanksgiving dinner, get yourself some knives for your friends for the holidays, just really any occasion is a great time, but I will be seeing you more in the future. 15 minutes until Jeff and his crew are here, so now that I've showered, I'm just gonna get changed and get ready to get out on the bay for Fishbrook here. You can already hear all the boats on the water getting ready. I think this event started at 3 a.m., but we decided to wait for sunrise to get out of here. some lines in the water. We've got a really great group of people this morning. Our really good friend Jeff Bach is the one that made this possible. His brother Jim, friend Jeff, and then one other guy that I haven't been introduced to yet. But this is our first competitor out on the water behind us. I think there's like 70 something boats participating in this tournament today. So we're gonna see if we can get the biggest fish and win a prize. further south on the bay after having our lines out for, I don't know, 20 minutes and not really getting anything, but the fact that we're surrounded by about 20 other boats right now, I think we've found a spot, so we're going to put the lines in again and see what we can catch. <laughs> Good job, Matt. I did a lot. I know. It was all like, somebody grab the line and reel that in. <laughs> 
We've caught our first two fish of the day. Uh, we're just kind of like trolling lines right now instead of doing the live baiting. Not enough to win the competition, but not only that, it is officially nine o'clock. I think it is time for our first celebration beer of the day. For later. There's Miller. I'm not drag. I'm we're catching fish. <laughs> this is the spot to be. All of us are gathering, and it seems like every time we drop our lines in the water, something's coming back up. So we just about got our fill, nothing tournament wise. That is three. A double. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, he's a fighter. <laughs> That's mine. In case you haven't heard of Fish for a Cure, it's a fishing competition and fundraising event where participating boats raise money for Luminous Health at Anne Arundel. Every single cent raised goes towards programs for cancer survivorship, which helps patients not only survive, but thrive. Donor-funded programs provide social, emotional, physical, and psychological support for patients and families as they navigate treatment and recovery from illness. Over $4 million have been raised in the past 15 years, and we heard this year's competition raised over $575,000 alone. Now we're going to try just a little bit of jigging by this big cargo ship that is anchored here because I think like the fish tend to feed off the bottom or sit in this area so we're not quite like the center console here that's getting within feet of this boat but uh, we're just going to throw out some lines and see if anything comes of it. I don't think I've ever been this close to one of these ships before. I know, it's, it's an experience for sure. fish for a cure which has been absolutely amazing we know we didn't get the winning fish but we still had an amazing time and i think we caught like our fill of just charter but jeffrey has a new cannon and we're gonna fire it off black powder yeah and now like shake it around probably have not seen me much in our recent videos. I know that we've been focusing mostly on Matt and what he has been doing. And if you haven't seen me, it's because I am doing the same thing as always, which is fairing, mostly working in our owner's hole, kind of in the vanity and then back towards the dagger board case in the hallway there. But I have come across something new, I should say Matt did from one of the guys that works in the yard here that is going to help us out and help me hopefully get much faster at this process. Through the process of fairing, a lot of people had told us about guide coats. So some people will take like a spray paint and lightly coat the surface and use their sanding blocks to take off the top layer and see where the indents are. As I had mentioned in previous episodes, the new 3M uh, premium fairing compound we use kind of does it on its own, starting off as a dark orange color and becoming whiter as you sand it. 
but for the really fine areas, a tip that was given to us by Colby, who is kind of like a mechanic here sometimes at the yard. You may remember, unfortunately, the incident of his uh, fire with this truck earlier this year, but he found a boatyard where some guys were using Dicom Blue liquid and this can just go into either an acetone or a denatured alcohol, and then it dyes it a dark blue color, and then you just put it on like either a rag or a paper towel, which then gets wiped across your surface, and you use that as your guide coat, which is really great because the spirits, the either denatured alcohol or the acetone, just evaporates that there's no bonding issues that you have to worry about later if there's anything left over. So we decided to try that out and see how it worked on Bulkhead 4 in our master head. As you can see at the very top, a lot of blue dye is still remaining, and those areas will need to be filled. Aside from a few random spots, Bulkhead 4 is looking very fair and only needs minimal attention going forward. Just a few swipes with more compound at the top and bottom, another run through with my sanding block, and I should be able to check this spot off my list. All right, I think using that denatured alcohol with the blue dye has given me a really good idea of how these bulkheads are going to turn out and what still needs attention. So bulkhead four is looking pretty good here. The dacker board case is still going to need a little work, which I think we knew just because of the, what was it, 11 layers of glass that went on there. Of course, there's gonna be undulations and uneven surfaces that require lots of filling, but I think this is gonna help me out a lot, and so hopefully we can just start getting fair and compound on, easily being able to spot the areas that need a little more filling and then just cover this whole boat so hopefully we can get it primed and painted. because we're in California and everybody here just smokes weed and eats granola. Step two, you're gonna wanna put your favorite flavorings in there. Ugh, what is that ungodly smell? Have you been bathing these days, Joyce? Japan. 